How did the Chinese Mafia destroy the Bubba Stream? Well, we'll get to that. But first, I want to say, if you like the content I've been putting out and want to support my channel, you can subscribe to my high design Patreon and get early access to content, access to unreleased videos, and access to my archive library of old documentaries that I took down from YouTube because, well, they were a little too spicy, as well as behind the scenes bonus content. Anyways, check out my Patreon. All the support goes a long way. The link is down below in the description. Anyways, let's get into the video. So one of my all time favorite flavors is pre 98 Bubba. And honestly, I hadn't really heard the name pre 98 until about four or five years ago when one of my best friends put me onto it. But we'll come back to that point a little later. But see, since I was 14, I've been heavily involved slash fascinated with this amazing plant. For around 10 years, give or take, I was involved in the distribution of this plant, working in and around the old Washington medical markets throughout my high school years. I was lucky that during my high school years, I was able to participate in the last few years of the original Wild West medical markets that ceased to exist nowadays. But Washington State would legalize recreationally in 2012 alongside Colorado, and we were the first states to open our legal rec industry that we still have today. But that three-year buffer period between 2012 and 2015 is what I like to call a gray market in limbo with very little legal consequences. And this was in many ways the last Wild West hurrah of the highly unregulated OG medical markets. And then Governor Jay Inslee would destroy those medical markets sometime in 2015 or 2016. But during the last couple years of my high school, I had a medical card and that allowed me to legally purchase, sell, transport the plant to other medical card holders. I could sell to stores, buy from growers, and in those last couple of years of high school, a friend and I would utilize Craigslist to advertise our delivery service supplying any quote unquote medical patients. But as you could probably guess, the last few years of this medical market was absolutely a free for all for the most part. The state hadn't opened up any rec stores and so there was no tax money to be collected and therefore literally zero enforcement. Craigslist was at the time a massive marketplace for medical patients to connect with one another and possibly make quote unquote donations in return for plants. I not only utilized Craigslist to advertise my delivery service, but also to connect with new growers and met dozens and dozens of them through those means. During this time, I met growers from all walks of life, but some of my favorite growers slash people to work with happened to be Chinese. The prices were always competitive. The bag appeal of the flower was always, for the most part, on point, and the smell was decent. But the one thing that always stuck with me was that the Chinese folks that I would work with would always have only one strain for sale. And that was known initially as the Bubba, and, late, and a little later on would be, you know, morph into the name Platinum Bubba OG, or a variation of those three words in different order. Now, I always loved working with my Chinese folks because business was always legit. As long as you were good to them, they were good to you. The two Chinese growers that I worked with for almost six years were great people. While their English was very minimal and my Chinese was definitely non-existent, we still communicated decently well. Over this, those six years, me and my friends would end up purchasing thousands of units from them. As time would go on, I started to realize that the two Chinese growers I was working with happened to be under the broad banner of the triad or the Chinese mafia. And I had absolutely no problem with that at the time. And for the most part, I still don't really have a problem with that. But as years have gone by and I started to get curious about the Chinese mafia and their overall involvement with the illicit market in the US and their massive effect on the public reputation of the Bubba strain or the platinum Bubba OG or whatever you want to call it. Looking back on all the times I would consume that orange haired Bubba I would get from my Chinese folks, I realized that, how should I put this? Well, we were probably smoking, but that definitely wasn't grown organically at all. Probably had all types of bad shit in it, but hey, it wasn't the big reason why me and so many others have come to view the Bubba or the Platinum in somewhat of a negative light from a public perception standpoint. No, the simple fact is that the entire United States for the last however many years, probably dating back to the early 2000s and ramping up in the 2010s in and throughout the US, have been absolutely flooded with this specific Platinum Bubba. I'm sure many of you watching right now know exactly what I'm talking about. And we all know that flooding markets with one type of strain or one type of really anything does a lot of harm 
to the perception of that flavor or whatever it may be. Supply and demand doesn't only affect prices, but also perceptions and the value of that brand or the strain, the strand. Now, I've had many different varieties of the Bubba, whether it's the Purple Bubba or the Pre-98 that have been really, really fire. But it seems to me, and I may be biased, but the Chinese Platinum Bubba in the last 10 years has really started to actually popularize Pre-98 Bubba. Well, yes, I do know that the name Pre-98 was coined around 2001 or some something. I do think that the nostalgic connotations that come with the name Pre-98 in this current market overflowed with this Platinum Bubba OG has become more appealing. Yes, there's absolutely differences between these strain variations, but I'm looking at this from a branding and marketing perspective and making somewhat of a hypothesis that in many ways, while the Chinese Triad and all of its subgroups have destroyed the Bubba name, or at least the Platinum Bubba, it actually may have helped them, you know, bolster the pre-98 name and the strain. The connotation of the 98 or the 93 or the 89 Bubba being the good years or some would say the years before everyone started breeding has an appealing and potentially almost retro like effect but that's just my analysis definitely let me know what your opinion is down below in the comments but before we go on i want to thank the sponsor of this video get seeds right here get high quality seeds and high quality customer service so go to get seeds right here.com use my code lmc10 to get 10 percent off your entire order Use code LMC10 at GetSeedsRightHere.com. But now, let's jump into a little bit of history of the Chinese Mafia or the Triads coming to the US and their relationship with Bubba and why we've seen a steady increase in the number of illicit Chinese grows in the US, which is going up year after year in numbers. So we first need to look at the history of the Chinese Triad to understand what's happening today. So when we talk about the triads today, it's a term utilized as an overarching name that is a collection of hundreds of different triad groups. The triad's origins date back anywhere to the 19th century and was a collection of fraternal organizations. Now the triads have an interesting relationship with their home country of China and the different uh, governments that were in charge. In 1949, when the communists led by Mao Zedong took power, many of the triad groups fled in fear that they would be arrested by the new communist regime. Given Mao Zedong cracking down on what he called quote unquote black societies or otherwise known as secret societies. A large reason being the triad were very powerful in the country and many of the triad groups had aligned themselves with Chinese nationalists, which had lost the war against the communists, right? And which were now the people bunkered down on the island of Taiwan. Many of the triad groups would join them in Taiwan and the nationalist government would actually utilize the triad to crack down on any dissent from opponents of the nationalist government. The triad would actually help them maintain the four decades of martial law in Taiwan during the 20th century. But there are many instances in just the last 150 years where governments worked hand in hand with criminal organizations. I mean, literally the US during World War II and throughout the century worked directly with the mafia. Now, I make that point because that will be a little bit more important a little later on in this video. But let's fast forward to the 1990s where China was going through an incredible economic boom. And during this time, many of the Chinese triad groups would start to change their allegiance to the communist government of China, given the massive economic incentives that were now being put in play. Now, while Chinese triad groups had already been in America starting in the 1960s, during, you know, in San Francisco and other areas, it wasn't until the 1990s where the Chinese Communist government began to develop a tolerance for triad groups given their potential usefulness domestically, but more importantly, abroad internationally. Like many international crime organizations, the triad makes money in a bunch of different ways, but a significant way that increased heavily in the 1990s was human smuggling. Similar to what coyotes are in Mexico, the Chinese triads known as snakeheads mastered the art of human trafficking or smuggling. Even though China in the 1990s was experiencing a massive economic boom, many Chinese people wanted to get to America where they could still be making more money. And so these snakehead smugglers would charge them large amounts of money to smuggle them. And in many cases, the person who was being smuggled wouldn't have the money to pay them. So they would have to work in America or wherever they were smuggled to for however long it took them to pay back their debt. So these smuggled Chinese people are great tools for the triad to use as labor for, I don't know, maybe growing? 
Yeah, see, this has been going on for decades now, where the foreign criminal organization, let's say a prominent triad group, purchases, I don't know, let's say a hundred suburban houses in Northern California, and then they have the people they smuggled into the US pay off their debt by operating these grow houses. And that scenario isn't just a hypothetical example. I literally took that scenario from a news report that came out about five years ago. Police raided a hundred suburban houses in Northern California and discovered massive multi-million dollar illegal grow operations. And since the late 80s, early 90s, the number of illegal grow ops funded by Chinese nationals and different triad groups has continued to increase. Now, Chinese triads aren't the only group setting up illegal grows domestically inside the US. As a reason, we started to see a lot more cases where cartels have now come up north and set up their grows inside the US. But it seems that the Chinese triads have been doing this for decades at this point. In a lot of ways, the Chinese Communist Party has encouraged certain aspects of Chinese triad activity. When it comes to smuggling harder substances into the US and Europe, it seems like the Chinese government is okay with that, as long as they don't do any of that kind of stuff domestically inside of China. But when it comes to illegal grows and the triad, it's plain and simple, just a great way for them to make a lot of money. And when you really look at the issue of foreign criminal organizations operating in the US, it's hard for me not to look at how we have incentivized you know, these organizations with making substances, let alone a plant, illegal. Whenever a government makes a commodity illegal, well, that's a great way to attract organized crime groups. Illegal markets means prices that are inflated. Incentive for criminal elements to get involved goes up. And we have to spend taxpayer money on enforcement. But anyways, let's get to the last major question we need to address in this video. And that is, why do these illegal Chinese growers seem to only grow this one strain? Well, I think the main reason is that it's an easy, high yielding strain to grow and that they know it very well. Now there's a lot of controversy and arguments about the origins of the OG and the Bubba strains and while many people believe that Matt Bubba created the strain and you know I think Josh as well, uh, we're, we're just going to leave it at that for now. I have content discussing the strain history of Bubba coming in the very near future, so wait for that. But I think we can say that the triad groups operating illegal grows in the US have the primary goal of making money. And the Platinum Bubba OG is a strain that helps them do that. If you think you have the answers to any of these questions or you want it to correct me or make a comment, definitely leave it down below. I would love to hear your opinion. And do you think that the Chinese triad have tarnished the public's perception of Bubba and maybe in turn has bolstered the perception of pre-98? Anyways, before we wrap up here, I just want to thank the sponsor of the video, Get Seeds right here. Get high quality seeds, high quality customer service, and support me. Go to Get Seeds right here. Dot com. Use code LMC10 to get 10% off your entire order. Anyways, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Really appreciate y'all. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, share, and comment. Anyways, this is LMC signing out. Oh, wait. If you like the content I've been putting out and want to support my channel, you can subscribe to my high design Patreon and get early access to content, access to unreleased videos, and access to my archive library of old documentaries that I took down from YouTube because they were a little too spicy, as well as getting behind the scenes bonus content as well. Anyways, check out my Patreon. All the support goes a really long way. Anyways, this is LMC signing out.